Hello everyone, today we will discuss a prose piece by Ruskin Bond, Sounds I Like to Hear. Sounds I Like to Hear is a beautiful exploration of the soundscape of India. Bond expertly captures in words the numerous sounds that characterize life in a mountain village of Himalayas. He beautifully describes the swishing sound of the rain, drumming on the roofs in the beginning of his work. It is tranquil to lie awake listening to the sound of the rain. Ruskin Bond tells us that gentle rain on tin roofs is one of his favorite sounds. After the rains, Bond likes to hear the crow shaking the raindrops from its feathers and cooing unhappily. He also listens to the babblers and bulbuls bustling in and out of the bushes and long grass in search of worms and insects. The sweet sound of the Himalayan whistling thrush and the dogs rushing through the damp undergrowth are mentioned. As Bone was walking near the cherry tree, bowed down by the rain, it flinked pellets of water in his face. Ruskin Bond tells us that the best sounds are made by water. He describes the mountain stream which is in a hurry bubbling over rocks. It is compared to a white rabbit tumbling over the hills to reach the bottom in haste. We are here reminded of the white rabbit in the popular classic Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. He also likes the sound of the sea heard from afar or when he puts a seashell to his ear. He talks about the sounds made by the dry and thirsty earth as it absorbs a sprinkling of water. He also listens to the simple sound of a child drinking thirstily while the water runs down his chin and throat. He then talks about the sound of water gushing out of the pans of an old well outside the village. The creaking of the bullock cart bullock cart wheels over rough uh, country roads is also mentioned. The clip-clop of a pony carriage and the tinkle of its bell and the sing-song call of its driver is beautifully represented. After these sounds, the author concentrates on the sounds coming from the mountains. He mentions the bells ringing in the hills. He talks about the sound of the school bells and the voice of the children drifting through an open window. He hears the temple bells ringing faintly from across the valley and the sound of heavy silver angle bells on the feet of sturdy hill women. Sheep bells could also be heard high up on the mountainside. Ruskin Bond tells us about the falling petals, which produces a tiny and soft sound like the drift of falling snow. Then he calls big flowers like dahlias, which produces a definite flop sound when it falls to the ground as a show off. The hawk moth comes flying into the rooms at night, not like the gentle butterfly moving lazily in the afternoon breeze. He calls this as an instance of show off. If you want to listen to the favorite sounds, Bond calls us to return to the birds. The sound of the birds of the plains differ from the birds of the hills. In winter, in winter mornings, in the plains of northern India, we could hear the familiar call of the black patridge. It seems to cry like Bhagwan Teri Kudrat, which means, O oh God, great is thy might. The cry of the birds rises from all directions, but an hour later, not a bird is to be seen or heard, and the jungle becomes silent. The silence seems to shout at us. Then there are sounds that come from a distance. They are beautiful because they are heard from a distance. Some voices are carried by the wind. They seem to walk on the wings of the wind. It carried the sound of the fishermen out on the river, drums beating in a distant village, and the croaking of frogs from the rainwater pond. The nearby sounds can sometimes be noisy. A frog croaking beneath one's window and the sound made by a motor horn can be quite jarring for a few. Then Bone talks of homely sounds the sounds coming from the kitchen. He gives examples of a kettle on the boil, 
a door that creaks on its hinges, old sofa springs, voices in the dark and ducks quacking in the rain. Afterwards, he returns to the sound of rain which he loves most. He loves to hear the voices of crickets and grasshoppers and little frogs after the rains in the night. But he heard a mysterious sound on which he could never find the source. He wanted that sound to remain as a mystery even if science could give answers rationally. The work ends with a beautiful poem in which Bond exhorts us to listen to the night wind in the trees, the summer grass singing, the time that is passing by and the sound of the morning dew. He tells us to listen to the moon as it climbs up the sky, to the pebbles humming, the mist in the trembling leaves and to the beauty of silence. Thank you and thanks for watching.